Hi, I'm Daisha Seifer, and I'm going to demonstrate how to compute a Pearson chi-score test using SPSS. As you can see, I have the data set called Exercise 35, Example 1, from your Grove and Cipher textbook. There are two variables in this small data set, and they're both nominal variables. A Pearson chi-square test was designed to test uh, differences in levels of nominal variables. And so we have our first variable, antibiotic resistance, representing uh, whether or not a veteran with a spinal cord injury was displaying evidence of antibiotic resistance. And the second variable is an extended a history of antibiotic use. For both of these, I'm using ones and zeros, where one represents the presence of that thing, and zero represents the absence of that thing. Uh, ones and zeros are commonly used in coding nominal variables, where one is a yes and a zero is a no. That's pretty typical. And so our null hypothesis is there is no difference in antibiotic resistance between those who had an extended history of antibiotic use and those who did not. So let's test our hypothesis and see what we find. Let's go to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, Cross Tabs. We move one of our nominal variables to a row or column and the other to a row or column, it doesn't matter which one you choose. Your results will be the same. From there, we click on statistics, and in the top left corner, we click on chi-square. Now, you see a lot of statistical choices here. All of these will analyze uh, nominal level data, but it depends on what your research question is. Um, there are association types of nonparametric statistics here, like the phi and the Kramer's V, that will address a research question or a null hypothesis that has to do with an association between two nominal, two or more nominal variables. But for us, we want to look at the difference in resistance between two groups. And so we're going to focus on the chi-square. Click Continue and OK. All right, the first table that you see just simply displays your sample size. And the next table we have is a called a contingency table, and it breaks down the proportions of um, your two nominal variables into distinct categories. So those with or without antibiotic resistance, those with and without a history of antibiotic use. Okay, and uh, the, we're going to go back to that. The last table actually gives the Pearson chi-square results. The very top row displays the chi-square value, 4.2 degrees of freedom of one, and our exact p-value. So the likelihood of obtaining a Pearson chi-square test of 4.2, if the null were actually true, is only 4%. So we have a significant result here. So what does it mean? We need to go back up to the contingency table to make sense of what we're looking at. Now remember, we're looking at and investigating the percentage of antibiotic resistance in those with and those without antibiotic use. So let's take a look. Of those who had no history of antibiotic use, seven of the 28 were resistant. So 7 divided by 28 is 25 percent, as opposed to 8 of the 14 who, who did have a history of antibiotic use. 8 divided by 14 is about 57.1. So it's the 25% versus the 57.1% that is what is considered statistically significantly different. So how do we interpret? Well, we go to the book and we see that our final interpretation reads as follows. Uh, a Pearson chi-score analysis indicated that antibiotic users had significantly higher rates of antibiotic resistance than those who did not use antibiotics. Then you must list the chi-score symbol, and then the degree of freedom, comma, and then the sample size, uh, and then the value of 4.2, and your exact P of 0.04. 
And then it really helps, this is not required per APA, but it does help to list those percentages to put some context into what we're looking at here. So uh, I, I wrote 57.1%, versus 25% respectively. And note, I needed to put the 57.1% first because that's the order that the, uh, the levels were presented here. The antibiotic users had higher rates. So if you said the non-antibiotic users had lower rates, you'd want to switch the percentages to 25% first uh, versus 57 but so it all depends on how you choose to present the interpretation. So this finding does suggest that extended use may be a risk factor, but this is not a, a causal interpretation. This was not a randomized clinical trial, so uh, we would need to do further work to establish a direct link, but it is certainly a good first step. Thank you for watching. Hope this helps.